Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Talks Trading. My name is Sky and I'm on a quest to invest and today we're going to be talking about Neo stock. People are fretting a little bit. Well, Neo stockholders are fretting a little bit because shares have been dropping quite a bit today. One day after Neo and other Chinese electric vehicle makers announced January deliveries. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about the delivery numbers. Neo reported it shipped 9,652 vehicles in January. So that is down 8% from December. December deliveries were 10,489. Shares dropped as much as 7.4% in early trading today and remained down 4.8%. But I mean, you know, Neo wasn't alone in reporting these uh, less than ideal numbers. Xpeng and Li Auto also reported drops of 19% and 13% respectively. You know, but we know that Neo has had production impacted by supply chain constraints, uh, as well as work to retool its manufacturing lines in recent months, um, you know, because it's pl- they are planning for expansion. You know, if you walk into open heart surgery halfway through, it looks like murder. I don't think that was a very relevant point. Sorry. So, you know, there's still lots of positive news, you know, fundamentals haven't changed and the catalysts haven't changed. You know, they've announced two new sedan models for this year and they also plan to continue growth into European markets. Uh, Its new ET7 flagship luxury sedan will begin shipping at the end of March. And then the smaller kind of mid-size ET5 sedan should see delivery starting in September. Even after Neo shares have dropped 25% year to date, its market cap remains at almost $40 billion. But if sales continue to grow as expected, investors might find that this is in fact a good entry point. Neo stock's poor performance in 2021 reflects other issues faced by the Chinese electric car company. The first of these was the ongoing computer chip supply chain issues that particularly affect affected August and October deliveries. According to William Lee, which is Neo's CEO, although more than 1,000 go into each car, missing just one chip can affect production. Uh, And then there's the other issue of political tensions between Beijing and Washington, and that's obviously going to affect Chinese stocks on the American exchanges. According to Neo's management, the company will certainly follow American laws and regulations, but it doesn't rule out the possibility of listing the company on the Hong Kong stock exchange in the future. I mean, Wall Street still thinks that NEO is undervalued, um, you know, a bit of a sleeping giant, if you will. You know, if we look at some of the latest ratings, we've got HSBC. They raised the price target on NEO from $53 to $54 and maintained its nice buy recommendation. The decision was motivated by the amazing deliveries reported in December and a 50% year over year increase. And then we've got Bank of America which also has a buy recommendation. Um, they, they have a $65 price target. The reason for this optimism is that the company's management expects orders to continue to grow from new models being launched in 2022. And then there's the analyst Credit Suzy, who was undeterred by the relative underperformance. He named Neo as his top pick in the China auto space, citing clear growth prospects in 2022. Bin Wang, who is another analyst, reiterated an outperform rating and $83 price target on Neo shares, suggesting over 230% upside from current levels. The analyst expects Neo's 2022 sales volume to jump 64% to 150,000 units due to its penetration into the sedan segment. And Neo could announce another three SUVs in 2023. Uh, there's the new Gen ES6, the new Gen ES8, and ES5 compact sized SUVs. And then in 2024, the company will likely add three sedan products the ET6, ET8, and ET9 and unveil its mass market brand. So bottom line, things are still looking very bullish for Neo stock. Um, I just want to talk about some other news stories today. Let's talk about meta shares. Meta shares sink 20% as Facebook loses daily users for the first time. I'm honestly quite surprised that this is the first time that they've lost daily users. I hardly ever use Facebook anymore. None of my friends do. Um, and honestly, it's rubbish. They've been blaming Apple's privacy changes and increased competition for users 
from rivals like TikTok. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the Apple's privacy changes. I don't know if that would impact it, but I definitely think that, yeah, more people are just, they're on TikTok. That's a fact. It is more addictive than Facebook. Facebook's global daily active users declined from the previous quarter for the first time to 1.929 million to 1.930 million. Facebook is 18 years old at this stage and they they do face pressures from newer platforms like TikTok and Instagram, you know, Instagram with reels and stuff. And of course, YouTube, they're competing for ad revenue with TikTok. You know, investors looking at Meta are starting to realize that buying their stock is no longer mostly an investment into their ad platform. It's now looking more like a commitment that you believe that the metaverse will replace much of the internet that consumers experience today. In other news, PayPal. PayPal had their worst day since the company spun off uh, from eBay in 2015, plunging nearly 25%. Uh, So they plunged to $132.30 on Wednesday. The wipeout shaved $51 billion off PayPal's market value, knocking it down to $207 billion. So that means the decline pushed the stock's price-to-earnings ratio down to 27.5, below its five-year average of 33 times forward estimates. Meta and PayPal not having a good time lately, but Neo is great. (laughs) That's what I want to say. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And uh, until next time, have a great day.